hub and strut construction is probably um, one of the, the best known systems for building a geodesic dome. Uh, they come in a huge range of different designs. Um, there are literally hundreds of different designs, but they all share a common um, form. Uh, and that is that you have a central hub and um, all of your struts join into that hub somehow. Uh, so this one t typically is a star type like that uh, and you can you, you put two couple of bolts in and, and connect it together there are other types um, like discs um, this is a, a system with uh, discs and timber beams uh, you can do the similar sort of thing with pipes um, this is just a small selection of possible ways to do it but there really are um, hundreds of different ways um, the thing about um, hub and strut is no matter what system you use they all share um, the same advantages and disadvantages right let's start with the advantages uh, the main advantage of using hub and strut is that uh, you can disassemble it um, it's usually bolts um, something like that and if you take it apart and stack all the struts together and put all the hubs in a box uh, you can pretty much get quite a large dome like this size into the back of a van uh, no problem but that's with the caveat that you use a, a canvas cover Although there's a lot of different hub and strut systems, uh, they all share um, the same two problems. Uh, first one is uh, if I uh, remove the skin and we look at the struts. We, this is a typical three frequency dome. We have uh, red, green and blue struts to show the different struts um, and the hubs join them. Uh, at each vertex right the, uh, this being a and it's not that big it's a um, sort of an average size dome and it's a three frequency uh, this has um, 45 hubs in total now uh, th this particular design uses discs so we can see that there's a disc here that fits into a, um, a hole in each in the end of each strut there's 45 of those and there's six different ones. Obviously a red one, a red join here is has different hole di um, angles and things like that to a blue-green join. Um, and all the base ones obviously have to have uh, a base pad put on them. So there's, there's three, this is a left and that's a right. There's three base ones and there's three um, in, the, in the dome. All green, all red and the colour mix. Uh, now what that does is, uh, if you were to do a quick calculation of the costs of uh, adding a hub, uh, on, on something like this, I mean, you're looking at, um, you know, five or six uh, components on the end of each strut, and very often two uh, discs, if you like, on this design, inside and outside. But whatever hub system you use, it's going to cost you 10 or 20 quid to make and if you multiply that by 45 you can be very quickly up to a thousand pounds just for uh, the hubs and then you've got to add on your your struts after that so it's it's a, a fairly expensive way uh, of building and um, the other problem is if we stick the skin back on is you can only really build uh, marquees and tented structures uh, using this method um, we'll take a quick look now at why not right if we um, try to cover this frame in a hard material like a plywood or a OSB or something like anything hard um, we, we get a couple of problems if I we take a closer look you'll see that uh, I'll remove a couple of struts there look closer and you'll see that there's a void here and there's also another void at the hub. Uh, I'll show you that in more detail on in 2D. 
if we take a look at um, cross section, this is our strut here, and this shows the whatever covering we're going to use. Say it was plywood or glass or whatever. Um, obviously, when you put your dihedral angles on here, you're left with this void. Uh, this is not a good idea um, for uh, strength in a dome, and it's it's uh, you you have this split here. It's very similar to the arrowhead method. Is if you put a square section timber down the centre of a dihedral, you always end up with this void here, which uh, isn't really desirable. Uh, also, if you look at the um, two hubs together, two struts, sorry joined by a, a, a hub section here. Uh, there's also a void at every hub joint. Uh, so it's got a, a void running all the way down the centre of two panels and an extra big void here. So to recap, um, using a hub and strut system I would only use it for tented structures. Um, the, it does pack down really well um, there is probably no other method other than this if you want to pack something down into and put it in the back of a van, something of, of about this size. There's not really any other method to do that other than uh, hub and strut. So it's good for that, but it's not really any good for um, solid structures, houses, greenhouses, uh, things like that. There are better ways to do that.